Hey guys, a special warm welcome to each and every one of you. We're so glad to have each and every one of you here tonight with us. As you all may not know or those who do know, tonight is our Miracle Night service. And we would love for you guys to share this video to someone's hearts who need to get a touch from God tonight. Someone who you know who is sick or shut in. Someone who you know that needs God healing tonight. Please share this video to them and tell them about God's mercy upon their lives. Can you bow your hearts tonight as we go to God in prayer and as we welcome His presence in this awesome time we're going to have tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. We worship your holy name, oh God. Oh God, we magnify your holy name for you are the true and living God tonight, oh God. We exalt your name on high, oh God. We lift your holy name on high, oh Lord. Oh God, we come before you tonight, oh God, Father Jesus. Oh God, we pray, oh God, that you have your way in this service, oh God, Father Jesus. Oh God, go touch, oh God, Father Jesus, people in their house, oh God, as they watch this video, oh God, as they watch this service tonight, oh God, Father Jesus. Let their hearts be surrendered unto you, oh God, Father Jesus. Let them focus on you, oh God, Father Jesus. Oh God, I pray, God, for your man, servant, as he come, oh Lord, Father Jesus, you bless him, oh God. As a word go forth, oh God, let it not fall on deaf ears, oh God, Father Jesus. So have a special move tonight, oh God. Move in a mighty way in this service tonight, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for what you're going to do, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory. 
strength where I am weak and ever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, Savior. Jesus. Hallelujah. Indeed, we have the victory in Christ Jesus. And we just give God all the praise that is due unto his name, for he is awesome. If tonight you agree with me and you think God is awesome, why not type it in the comments? God is awesome. Type it in the comments. God is awesome. I'm so glad that you join on. And not only is God awesome, but you are awesome because you are his child. You are his daughter. You were created in the image and likeness of God, sons and daughters of the King. So you tonight, you are awesome. Why not type that in the comments? I am awesome. <laughs> and don't worry, it's not a proud statement. It's just a confirmation of who God sees you are. You are awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much for all that are joining on. If you're clicking on for the very first time, we welcome you. For those that are part of our Influence Church family, thank you so much for joining on tonight. And if this is your very first time, why not let us know in the comments and let us know this is your first time. Just say, I'm a first timer. I'm here, I'm visiting, now clicking on anything to that extent. Let us know that this is your first time viewing. And for those of you that are joining on regularly, why not let me know which part of Trinidad, or even if you are viewing outside of Trinidad and Tobago, which part of the world you are viewing from. So don't give me your street address, your house address, but just the area that you're from. So let's see all the people that are joining on from Shagonas, all the Shagonas people, put it in the chat. I'm from Shagonas <laughs> or Shagonas. If you're joining on from Chase Village, all the people are joining on from San Fernando, from Port of Spain, from Grandi, uh, from Icacus, <laughs> wherever it may be, just put it in the comments. Let me know where you're joining on from. It's, if it's from the US or the UK, wherever it may be, India. Let us know where you're joining on from and from wherever, whichever part of this nation, Trinidad and Tobago, whichever part of the world you're joining on from, we say thank you so much and welcome to Influence Church Saturday night worship and word service. And this worship and word service is a very special one because it's not just a time where we worship God, where we hear from God's word, but we go one step further. Tonight is our 
miracle service. We believe that God is a miracle working God. When we examined the life of Jesus while he was on earth, we saw Jesus perform many miracles. And we believe in the power of Jesus Christ. We believe that God performs miracles right now in this very time and in this season. And if you are willing, if you are in need of a miracle, then you've joined on at the right time in the right program tonight in our miracle service. So thanks so much for joining on. If you have not done it as yet, hit that share button so that more persons can be part of our miracle service tonight and can receive from God. So this being our miracle service, I want to turn your attention to the book of Matthew chapter 14 verses 34 to 36 and I'm going to parallel that passage with a passage from Matthew chapter 20 verses 29 to 34. So you can grab your notepad, grab a pen so that you can take notes and let's go to Matthew chapter 14 verses 34 to 36, all right? So let's read it together. And you can read it out loud, as loud as you want. Uh, you're at home, we're having church at home online tonight. In verse 34 it says, When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, who did they recognize? They recognized Jesus. When they recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region. And look what they did. They brought, who did they bring? They brought all that were sick, all, all that they, was, that they could find in all the surrounding regions of Gennesaret that were sick. They brought them to Jesus, and verse 36, and begged him that they might only, look at what they wanted to do, they wanted to touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made, look at that word there, perfectly well. Put that in the comments perfectly well. Are you looking for perfection to be perfectly well? Hey, Jesus can make you perfectly well. And the next passage we're reading is from Matthew chapter 20, verse 29 to verse 34. And it says, Now as they went out to Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two men, now these two men were blind, two blind men, they were sitting by the roadside. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us, O Lord. So they cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. And verse 31, then the multitude warned them and they sh that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And verse 32. So Jesus stood still. He stood still. And he called out to them. And he said, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Verse 33. Then said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Verse 34. So Jesus had compassion. He touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. This title for my sermon for tonight comes from verse 32 where it says, And Jesus stood still and called out to them. The title for our sermon is When God Stood Still. Put it in the comments, When God Stood Still. Still, why not stay still in this moment? Place your left hand on your right hand and let's go to God in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, work on this heart of ours. Let your word bring about that transformation. Let your word, God, bring about that breakthrough, that healing, that miracle that we so desire tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. How was your week this week? How was your week? I want to know how was your week this week? And to gauge me in this conversation, I'm going to give you a little bit of um, a... ABC or multiple choice response for this question, right? So if this week has been awesome, if it has been one of your best weeks ever, why not put a heart emoji in the comments, right? So if it's been your best week, 
heart emoji in the comments. If this week has been your worst week, <laughs> it's been a total disaster. I want you to put an angry face in the comments, right? So usually I don't like angry faces in the, in the comments in our church um, live stream, but just for tonight, I would allow it just for the sake of our discussion, right? So if you had have the worst week ever, I want you to put an angry face in the comment, right? And if you've had a week that has had its ups and downs, you know, it's had some good times, but it's also had some bad times. I want you to put a laughing face in the comments, right? A laughing face. So if you've had an awesome week, it's a heart emoji. If you had a terrible week, it's an angry face. And if it's been, you know, up and down, it's been good, it's been all right. I want you to put a laughing emoji, all right? So put it in the comments. Let me see all the people with the angry faces. I know some people might just take the opportunity tonight just to put an angry face because they are getting one. But let me know what has your week been like? Has it been an angry face? Has it been an heart emoji or has it been a laughing face what has it been like for you i think for me if i had to respond right now and say what my week has been like with an emoji it would probably be a laughing face right because my week has has it's had its ups it's had its downs it's had its good moments it's had its bad moments for example this past week as a nation we would have suffered the loss of three children that were killed in a home fire and this family would have lost three of their kids and nobody can really articulate the kind of pain that that family would have felt and is still going through right now in this period of mourning having lost their three children in a home fire this past week many persons would have gotten test results back they would have said they are positive for the COVID-19 virus this past week some families would have lost loved ones to whatever form of sickness and disease. This past week, some persons might have gone to the doctor and the doctor would have given them some bad news or scheduled them for a surgery because there's something going on on the inside of them, something going on in their internal organs that is disastrous to their health. You know, this past week, somebody probably lost their job. This past week, somebody probably made an investment that didn't bring back any return and now they are at lost. You know, this past week, may have had its ups, it may have had its downs, maybe it's been awesome, maybe it's been the worst week ever, but we've all had different experiences. And while we've had different experiences, as we're joining on tonight, most of us joining on are here because we need a move of God. We need God to really step in and do a miracle. We need God to really heal us in our body. We need God to maybe guide the surgical procedure so that there's nothing that goes wrong and no long-term side effects. We need God maybe to provide finances because the bank is calling and our debts are raising and we have rent to pay and we have mortgages to pay. We have loans to pay. We have car rent to pay. We have all these different things right now that are going on. Maybe we are hurting because maybe we lost a loved one or maybe our relationship is broken, a spouse has left, a, a kid has, has rejected and rebelled against their parents. You know, whatever reason you're joining on, the fact is that you're joining on in this miracle service because you need God to stand still. You need God in this moment to stop and attend to your needs. And here we see that there are two blind men standing by the roadside. They can't see, but they can hear. And even though they can't see, they hear Jesus passing by. And because they hear Jesus passing by, they cry out with a loud voice saying, Son of David, Lord, have mercy on me. And maybe you're joining on tonight and saying, God, please have mercy on me. I need you to stop and I need you to seek to my affairs. I need you to heal me in my body. I need you to provide for me. I need some kind of miracle. I've looked all over. I've searched all over, but I can't seem to find a remedy. I can't seem to find a cure. I don't know how I'm going to earn the finances that I need. God, I need a miracle. Have mercy on me. If you're saying that, why not put it in the comments? God, have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. But what I love about these two blind men is that while they were blind, they saw something that many did not see. You see, these two blind men recognized who Jesus was. They could have chosen to use their blindness, their ability to not see, 
as a hindrance for them not knowing who Jesus was. And oftentimes when it comes to us receiving our miracle, when it comes to us reaching out and ensuring that God stops by and he blesses us, there can be hindrances that stop us. There can be hindrances. For these two blind men, their sight could have been a hindrance. The fact that they could not see could have been a hindrance. It surprises me how many times I would invite people to church and their response would be, I can't come because I'm sick. I can't come because I have this disability. I can't come for this specific reason. And the funny thing is that this, I'm not speaking about people that are shut in and they can't leave their beds, right? I'm speaking about people that are going through a difficult season. But they seem to somehow think that their difficult season hinders them from coming to church. When the opposite is true. Because you are going through a difficult season, you should come to church. Look at this. The blind men, they didn't see Jesus, but they heard him passing by. And oftentimes, it's the same thing that you need healing for becomes the hindrance in your life. The same thing that you need to bring to God is what at times you allow you to keep you away from God. And tonight, it's easy because you're just clicking on, on a stream and that's all well and good. But will you surrender your heart and this moment? Will you surrender your issues to God or will you allow them to be a hindrance and say, well, I can't know God because I can't see. They couldn't see, but they relied on what they could hear. And maybe you have to shift your focus from what you can't do to what you can do. From the weakness that you have to the strength that you have. I've heard studies into the fact that people that can't see tend to have a more developed sense of hearing and smell and touch. So for these two blind men, for however long they were blind, their ability to hear would have developed a little bit more than the regular Joe, the regular guy that was part of the crowd that day. Because imagine, if there's a multitude following Jesus, it's going to be noisy. It's going to be noisy. It's going to be loud. But they still were able to hear that it was indeed Jesus that was passing by. And they didn't allow their disability to disable them from recognizing who Jesus was. The second thing that at times could be a hindrance to us receiving our miracle is the crowd. What does it say? It says that the crowd tried to silence them. So they could have allowed their lack of ability to see to stop them and they could have allowed the crowd trying to silence them to stop them but even though the crowd was trying to silence them the scripture says that these two men cried out even louder there's like you try to silence us then we will shout it out and i want to know that there are some people joining on tonight that would say no matter what the crowd says i'm gonna reach out to jesus because i need a miracle nobody can silence me nobody can stop me i'm gonna shout if i have to shout and say jesus have mercy on me and they didn't allow the crowd to stop them and sometimes we could allow religion to become that crowd that tries to silence us like you're not a christian you're a muslim you're a hindu you're an atheist you shouldn't be going to Jesus. You shouldn't be asking Jesus for a miracle. You shouldn't be going to church. You shouldn't be asking the pastor to pray for you. You shouldn't be asking for, for something from this God of Christianity. And sometimes we could allow religion to be that crowd. Sometimes we could just allow our friends and family members that really just don't see us moving out of the place that we're struggling with and saying that, hey, you just got to cope with it. You just got to accept this as your reality. This is what you're going to live with for the rest of your your life and you got to stop and say hey hey this crowd cannot silence me i know that jesus can do a miracle and i'm going to shout out and say jesus son of david son of david why was that so important son of david these men were blind they could have never seen what jesus looked like but somehow they knew from what they would have heard that he was the son of David. Why was that so important? It was that these two men weren't able to see, but somehow they understood Jesus' lineage. They understood where he came from. Because for most people, they didn't recognize Jesus as son of David. 
They recognize Jesus as the carpenter's son. They recognize Jesus as Mary's son. But these two men recognized that Jesus was the son of David. Why was that so important? Because it was a prophetic word that out of the lineage of the King David, the greatest king to ever live, out of David's bloodline would come one who would be the king to lead the people and he will be the Messiah, their savior and deliverer. And while many other people at that time saw Jesus as only a teacher, they saw Jesus as only a great man, these two blind men realized that this was the Messiah. They shouted out, Lord, son of David. They understood this is the king. This is God with man, Emmanuel. This is the one that came to save us and redeem us. And I wonder tonight if you would recognize who Jesus is, because the first step to your miracle is recognizing who Jesus really is. He's not merely a man. He's not merely a human being. He is the Son of God. He is God Almighty. He is seated on the throne. He reigns supreme. He is creator God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And he's here and he wants to do a miracle in your life. But will you stop and recognize this is the Son of David? They recognize who he was. That is so, so important. That is so important, right? Because in Matthew Chapter 13, verses 54 to 58. Matthew chapter 13, verses 54 to 58. It says that Jesus, now it came to pass, he had finished the parables that he was teaching. And he departed from there. Verse 54, look at this. When he had come to his own country, he went to Nazareth, his own country. He taught them in their synagogue. So they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Look at it, look at it. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not, is not his mother called Mary? Isn't she the one that claimed the Holy Spirit, conceived a child in her? Isn't that this boy's mother? And his brothers are James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? Aren't they just the regular guys down the street? Aren't they just part of this community, part of Nazareth, a place that nothing good can come from? Aren't they just these regular folks? How come he knows so much? How come he performs such great miracles? And look at what happens. Jesus said to him, a prophet is without honor, except, is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. Verse 58. For me, this verse breaks my heart. It says, no, he did not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. They didn't recognize who Jesus was. All they could see him as was the carpenter's son. All they could see him as was Mary's child. All they could see him as is just another guy from Nazareth, a no-name town. That was all they could see him as. And because of that, the Bible says he could not perform many mighty works because of their unbelief. If in this moment you have unbelief, in this moment you don't think that Jesus is God, you don't think that Jesus could perform miracles, I want to assure you right now. I want to stir up your faith because as you recognize who he was, these men were blind, but they could see spiritually this was the son of David. This was the son of God. And this moment you might be able to see, but I want your spiritual eyes to be open and for you to recognize who Jesus really is. Because when you recognize who he is, then he can perform many mighty works in your life. And Jesus came to perform many mighty works. He went to Nazareth to do many mighty works. But because of their unbelief, he could not. Don't let your unbelief hinder you right now from stepping into the promises of God, the blessings of God, the miracles and the mighty works that Jesus wants to do right here, right now in your life. These two blind men recognize who Jesus was. And my parallel passage, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 34, we see here as well, when he entered into Gennesaret, they recognized him. They recognized him. 
here we see the word clearly stated that they recognized him. And because they recognized him and they realized this is the one who performs many mighty miracles, they sent out into all the surrounding regions and brought him all who were sick and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. What did they want to do? They wanted to touch the hem of his garment, the hem of his garment. They wanted to reach out and they wanted to touch the hem of his garment. They begged him, can we just touch the hem of your garment? Let us just touch the hem of your garment. And as I'm saying, touch the hem of your garment. If you've been in a church community for long enough, or you've viewed a couple services, or you've read their Bible, you're probably thinking, hey, this, this, this touching of the hem of his garment, this, this sounds really familiar. This sounds really familiar, doesn't it? And that's because a few chapters before that, there was this woman that the Bible says was suffering with an issue of blood for 12 long years. And she spent all her earnings on all the physicians that were available. And none of them were able to make her better. And after spending all that she had, she heard about Jesus. And while Jesus was passing by, she saw Jesus. And look at what it says in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 20. It says, And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. So now where we see in chapter 14, where this entire land of Gennesaret, they want to touch the hem of his garment, is because of this woman in chapter 9 who decided, I'm going to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. And look at what it says. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, then I shall be made well. And she decided in that moment, if I reach out, and touch the hem of his garment. If I just reach out and stretch my hand, I push through the crowd and I somehow get to the bottom of the edge of his garment and I just touch just the edge, I will be made well. And I want you to write this down. Because our third point for tonight is reaching out. And I want you to write this down. Reaching out starts within. Write it down, put it in the comments. Reaching out starts within within. What does it say in verse 21? It says, for she said to who? For she said to herself, to herself. She said to herself, if only I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. When it comes to reaching out to Jesus for a miracle, it starts within. You got to convince yourself you got to say to yourself, hey, if I could only reach out to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to just stand in front of the mirror and you got to just look yourself in the eyes and say, self, it's Jesus who can help me. I know you might be worried. I know you might have the pressures of the world weighing down at you. You might be like this woman with the issue of blood for 12 years where you've tried all different things. You've spent your all that you had trying to find a solution and none of them make you better. And and when you've tried so much and you've tried so hard, it's difficult to try one more time. But I want you right now to say to yourself, hey, I'm going to reach out because if only I can reach out and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. This is why Romans tells us that we ought to renew our mind. It ought not to be conformed to this world, but it ought to be transformed. Sometimes we've been conformed to certain patterns, certain ways of thinking. We believe that this is my portion. We believe that I should suffer. We believe that there is no cure. We believe that we have to live like this for the rest of our life. But it's time to change your mind. It's time to renew your mind and say, Hey, I can be healed if only I reach out and touch the hem of his garment. And I need you to have that inner conviction right now. I need you to have that inner conviction to think to yourself and say to yourself, Jesus can do this miracle. 
Why not type it in the comments? Jesus can do this miracle. Jesus can do this miracle. She said, if only I can reach out. And because of her reaching out and touching the hem of his garment, we have an entire nation of Gennesaret, all the people there that are sick, that are just saying, I want to just reach out and touch him. We have these two blind men that cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. God stood still. And he shouted, it out back to them what can I do for you what can I do for you I want you to know that right now Jesus is saying what can I do for you what can I do for you what can Jesus tonight do for you he asked these men what can I do for you and verse 33 they said to him Lord that our eyes may be opened now, this is significant because when it comes to miracles, the, the healing or the restoration of sight was something that was not frequent. It was something that did not happen before Jesus' time. What was significant about the ministry of Jesus was, the, was that blind people received their sight and that the dead came back to life and that the demon possessed were set free. These were three very significant parts of the ministry of Jesus. Because before this time, there were not many prophets that performed these types of miracles. There were prophets that raised from the dead, but the resurrection from the dead were between a three days period. After a three days period, it was believed that the soul was no longer there and the body could not be resurrected. But Jesus, he resurrected Lazarus on the fourth day. In the Old Testament, casting out demons was something that was not practiced, right? They didn't believe in casting out demons because they didn't have that power and authority. But when Jesus stepped on the scene, all that were demon possessed, he had power and authority to cast out those demons. And when it came to the eyes of the blind being opened, this was something that was uncommon. And it was a significant part of the ministry of Jesus. This isn't the first person that was blind that received their sight in the New Testament through the ministry of Jesus. But it was the first from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And all I say, I'm saying all of this to say that maybe what you're suffering with might be the first. Maybe you don't know anybody else that received a miracle for this type of disease. Like we have the COVID-19 virus right now. We don't have the data to show how many people would have received a miracle and be healed from the COVID-19 virus. Even though I've heard people give personal testimonies. And I know people are being healed from the COVID-19 virus. Maybe right now you're thinking, whatever you are going through, you don't know anybody else that God was able to fix this, this specific thing. You know, this specific thing, hey, I've never seen anybody else receive a miracle for it. Maybe it's a, it's a long-term health issue. Maybe it's a, a divorce that you're going through. I don't know what it might be right now. But I want you to know that Jesus specializes in the impossible. The Bible says, for man, it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And Jesus specializes in the impossible. So the men said, we want to see. And Jesus stood still. God stood still. And he said to them, it says that he said to them, sorry, they said to him, Lord, we want our eyes that they may be open. So verse 34, so Jesus had compassion. I just want to let that sink in right now. God has compassion on you, all right? If nobody else cares, Jesus has compassion for you. And he had compassion, and he touched their eyes. Now, the woman with the issue of blood, she wanted to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. The entire nation of Gennesaret that brought all that was sick, they wanted to reach out and touch the hem of the garment. But these two blind men, they didn't reach out. They couldn't see. They didn't even know where he was standing. And Jesus reached out and touched them. So whether you reach out or Jesus reaches out, once you come in contact with the almighty, the all-powerful, miracle-working son of God, miracles happen in that moment. So he reaches out and he touches their eyes. And immediately, look at what it says, immediately their eyes receive sight. They receive the miracle that they were in need of. Because Jesus, 
Jesus came so that you can be healed. Jesus came so that you can be made whole. Jesus came so that you can have life. And as they reached out, they cried out, they stretched out for the hem of his garment. In each scenario, they received from Jesus. They didn't go home empty-handed. They didn't go home saying, hey, I tried Jesus, I reached out, I cried out, but nothing changed, life goes on. No, they received. And I want you to know tonight that as you reach out to Jesus, you shall receive. Whatever you are struggling with right now, whatever you need a miracle for right now, when you reach out to Jesus, you shall receive. And the Bible says that some of us have not because we ask not. I remember when I was in university in my final year, there was this seminar called World of Work and it was in Spec Auditorium. It was a big area and there were a lot of different companies and they all set up booths. And the purpose of the seminar was for those that were about to graduate to go and to meet with different employees employers and try to gain employment right so you would go and you would probably carry your resume and i mostly went because they gave out a lot of free things right all the employers would come maybe with pencils pens with their logos calculators flash drives um, notepads book bags all these different things and and you would be able to just go and they would just give you different things right and i remember going to one stall and they had a lineup of pens and, and um, erasers and, well, I don't think university students use erasers, but pens and different items, right? Different stationary items with their logos there and everybody was, was take, taking items, right? And I remember seeing this big hamper right behind the stall that they were in, well, inside the stall, a big hamper with LLB drinks in it, right? Lemon and lime bitters. With a, so it was a big hamper with just drinks in it. And it was just one. And I... I turned to the lady that was operating that stall. And I said to her, hey, how do I get that hamper behind you? What do I have to do to get that hamper? And would you believe what this woman said to me? This woman looked back to me and said, you know what? It's yours. She went over, she took the hamper and she gave it to me. And she said, we just wanted to see who would be brave enough to ask for it. I couldn't believe it. I left that day with a huge hamper with LLB drinks, not for doing anything, not for being special, not for acing an interview or for answering any question, but simply just for asking. And all I'm saying right now is sometimes we have not because we ask not. Come before God, bring your needs to him, reach out and you shall receive. Say, Jesus, son of God, have mercy. They tried to silence these two blind men, but they said, hey, we have had nothing for all our lives and we're not going to stay having nothing. Nothing. We're going to ask and we know when we ask of God, we shall receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it over your life as you ask tonight, you shall receive. And they received their sight immediately. The woman with the issue of blood, 12 long years, she received healing and the issue of blood stopped immediately. All that were sick in the land of Gennesaret, they touched the hem of his garment and they were made well. Tonight, you shall receive whatever miracle you're in need of because Jesus is a miracle working God and it says in this final verse here it says they receive their sight and his last few words are very important they receive their sight and they followed him and they followed him they received their sight and they followed him because when God stands still it's time for you to redirect your life. They recognized who Jesus was. They reached out. They received. And lastly, they redirected. They said, hey, I'm going to follow Jesus. Now, when we started this passage, where were these two blind men? It says that they were on the roadside. Verse 29 into verse 30. It says, behold, two blind men sitting by the roadside. They were sitting by the roadside and they decided we're not going to sit by the roadside anymore, but we are going to redirect our life. We're going to follow Jesus instead because we received our sight. And the roadside is a reference to that place where people and life 
passes you by. They were sitting on the roadside all this time. Everyone would walk past by them. Every vehicle would drive past by them. Life would just be going on and they were just sitting there and they couldn't see any of it. They could hear it, but they couldn't experience it. And life was just going by. But when they had an encounter with Jesus, when they recognized who he was, when they reached out and they received, they redirected their life and they said, I'm not going to sit by the roadside with my sight, but I'm going to follow Jesus. Wherever he goes, I'm going to follow him. And the roadside refused first to that place where life just passes you by. Sin at times can be that place that keeps you by the roadside where life is just passing you by. Sickness at times can be that place that keeps you by the roadside where everything good is just passing you by. But when you have an encounter with Jesus, when you receive from Jesus, that's the moment to redirect your life. To say I'm going to move from the roadside to being on the right side. I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he goes. Whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. And these two blind men didn't stay by the roadside anymore, but they got up and they followed Jesus. And I want you to know tonight that as you reach out and as you receive from Jesus, it's time to redirect your life. It's time to repent. Repentance is turning away from the direction you were heading and heading the right direction. It's time to turn your life around and say, hey, I'm not going to let life pass me by. Because when Jesus comes into your life, that's when you start living. For the thief, he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The roadside is that place where Satan steals from you. He tries to kill you. He tries to destroy you. But when Jesus steps in, when Jesus takes your hand, when Jesus touches your life, and he says, get on the right side, that's when life comes, and when life comes more abundantly, because Jesus came to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. So tonight, it's time to redirect. You are made righteous in Jesus Christ. And it's when you receive Jesus, that's when you really start living. These men recognize who Jesus was. They reached out, they received, and they redirected their life. And tonight, the greatest miracle of all, the greatest miracle is for you to redirect your life and start following Jesus. That's the greatest miracle. Salvation is the greatest miracle. To know that you can have life and have life more abundantly in Jesus, that you can have a place in heaven, that is the greatest miracle that anyone can receive from God. And tonight if you're saying, hey, I recognize who Jesus is, I want to reach out, I want to receive but most importantly, I want to redirect my life. I want to start following Jesus. I don't want to sit by the roadside anymore and let life pass me by feeling purposeless, aimless, hopeless. But I want to find completion in God. I want to find fulfillment in God. I want God to direct my steps. I want God to bless my path. I want God to open doors of opportunities. I want to fulfill my purpose and find my destiny in Christ Jesus. If you're saying right now, yes, I want to redirect, then I want you to stop. Because God has stood still. And I want you to stop in this moment. I want you to place your hand on your heart. And if you're saying yes, I want to accept Jesus into my heart. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And as you pray, God is going to hear your prayer and he's going to answer and he's going to redirect your steps. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, tonight I recognize who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. Tonight, I repent. I turn away from my sinful ways. I ask God that you forgive me of all my sins. In this moment, I invite Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit to serving Jesus from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, I know faith has been stirred up in this moment. I know you want to receive a miracle from God. Like these two blind men, you want to see once more. You want to get up and follow Jesus. Like the woman with the issue of blood, you want it to end. You've tried all different solutions, but it didn't work. And you want to try Jesus because you believe if you just reach out and touch the hem of his garment, you shall be made well. Tonight, you want to reach out and you want to receive. And I'm going to pray for you. 
And I do believe that as we pray, that the power of God is going to fall upon you right now. In your homes, wherever you're viewing from, it doesn't matter that we're not in the same room. God is not limited by space or by time or by location. He's going to come right now and he's going to touch you. As you reach out and you touch the hem of his garment, power is going to be flow from God into your life and you're going to receive your miracle in this moment. So I want to invite you right now to stand to your feet if you've been sitting. I want you to stand. I want you to lift your hands. And I want you in this moment to set your focus on God because reaching out starts within. And I want you to say to yourself, hey, self, Jesus can do this miracle. I want faith to stir up right now as you recognize who he is. I want your faith to stir up right now so that you can reach out and you can receive from Jesus. And as you lift your hands, I want you to just set the atmosphere in your home by just giving God some praise, by saying, God, I worship you. I lift your name on high. I bless your name. I believe in you, Jesus. I'm reaching out. Close your eyes. God, forget who's around you. Close your eyes and just start praying and praising God. And we're going to sing Waymaker in this moment. And as, as the worship team sings, I want you to join along with them. I want you to lift your hands and just really worship God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might right now. Just lift your hands and just praise Him and just sing out Waymaker because He is a miracle worker. He is a Waymaker. So join me right now. Lift your hands to heaven and let's begin praising God in this moment. Hallelujah.